Hey guys and gals, how's it going? I'm Tom from PhoneUplink.com and Gaming Entertainers, and in this video, I'll be giving you my full review of the Google and Samsung built Nexus S. This is the successor to the Nexus One, which was built by HTC. Like I said, this one's built by Samsung, and you may notice that it looks a lot like the Galaxy S line, and that's because it is based off the Galaxy S line. Google just wanted to rebrand it and make it their flagship phone because it's such a good line of phones. So let's go over the hardware specs first, and then I'll give you my review. So the Google Nexus S features a 4-inch contour display. What does that mean? Well, it means a curved display. As you can see, or barely see, the display is curved, which actually doesn't really do a whole lot to it, but, you know, it's kind of cool. I'm not quite sure the advantages of it. I haven't really noticed anything from it. But also the screen resolution is 480 by 800 Super AMOLED display, so it does look very good. There is some pixelation that I do notice, but overall I'm very happy with it. It looks very good. It's got very good viewing angles, so you won't have to worry about that. And it looks pretty good in sunlight. It's got a 1 GHz Hummingbird processor with 16 GB of internal memory. You cannot put your own memory card in actually, so you're stuck with the 16 gigs. But, you know, it's a pretty good capacity. I think it'll last you a while. It's got an NFC near field communication chip. Basically what that means is, let's say there's a sticker. I don't have the sticker, for example, but let's say you have a little sticker on a store and they want to advertise their newest product or sale. You put your phone up to that sticker, put it on there, and it'll actually bring up, you know, links or whatever they want you to see. So pretty interesting. Sorry I can't uh, show that to you, but if you want to Google that or look it up on YouTube, you should find some videos. Um, it's got a new keyboard, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, it's got a front-facing and rear-facing camera. This one is 5 megapixels, and, or sorry, this one is 5 megapixels with auto flash. This one is a VGA resolution. It's got 3 axis gyroscope. Um, it's got 3.5 millimeter headset jack on the bottom and a removable 1500 milliamp battery which I'll show you right now if I can get the casing off. There you go. Let's take the battery out. I'm not very good at this actually. You know what? Let's just leave it in. But yeah, it's 1500 milliamps and I'll get into battery life later in the video. Let me get the casing back on. So let's review the hardware. Um, overall, I've been very happy with the hardware. Coming from as an iPhone user, I'm not going to compare it a whole lot, but I'm definitely very happy with this hardware. It is plastic and it is kind of light, but Samsung did a very good job on building this. It looks very good, very sleek looking. The contour display makes it look pretty good. Hardware overall is pretty good, very well built. I don't like the little uh, ring around the camera. I wish it didn't have that, but overall, it's all right. And everything else seems to be pretty good. The only odd thing I found is that the 3.5 millimeter headset jack is on the bottom. I'm used to it being on the top, but that's all right. Um, it's something I can deal with. But yeah, overall hardware very good. I've been very happy with it. Haven't had any really problems with it. Battery life could be better. Um, I usually get about a day on it. I can go through a whole day, and then I'll have to charge it. But I, it can't go up more than a day. So, and if you're doing something like watching Flash video, you're definitely going to kill your battery very quickly. So I wouldn't recommend doing a whole lot of Flash video viewing. But yeah, overall, hardware very good, and I'm very happy with it. Um, one weird thing I found with the power button is, it is here, but if you're holding it like this and you want to turn it on, you might accidentally hit the volume rocker, which is right here. So that might be a problem. Here's your, here's your volume button right there. The volume button is very nice, though. And you've got your volume rocker right there. You've got your camera right there in the 5 megapixel auto flash. You've got a speaker there. You've got this weird little hump, which um, helps with holding it, but not quite sure what that is for. Here you've got your speaker grill, 5 megapixel, or sorry, VGA quality camera. Getting those mixed up. Mini USB, which I, I believe it's mini USB. 3.5 mm headset jack. And you got your volume rocker like I showed you before. You got your power button. Overall, like I said, hardware is very good. So let's get into the software review. Google Nexus S runs Android 2.3, aka Gingerbread, which is the latest version of Google's Android operating system. 
and this is vanilla Android, which means there are no overlays by carriers or manufacturers, which is very nice, because the operating system works very well, and with the 1 gigahertz Hummingbird processor, there, it's very snappy, I haven't had any lag issues at all, which is very nice. With Android 2.3, you'll see some, as your, some changes to the design, like the navigation or notification bar at the top is now black. You have some different colors on the buttons down here. Some other slight changes. It's not a huge revision, but it's definitely nice. It's, having this black navigation bar is a lot better. Everything looks very good. So let's start with the, the, the web browser and keyboard. So I'll launch the browser really quick. Alright, so I already have a video loaded and a web page. Let's try pinching and zooming. As you can see, it's it works pretty well. Pretty it's pretty snappy overall. When you're dealing with web video, sometimes with flash video, it gets some lag issues. Overall flash video still needs a lot of work. I'll try playing this video right now. So as you can see, sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the video. Um, but it's going to drain your battery a lot. I've been watching my battery drain since I started playing this video. It, it, it's pretty bad. I wouldn't really recommend using this. I'd recommend using the application. But if you're browsing the internet and you see a video, it can be kind of useful. Again, not I'm not a fan of that. But anyways, it still works. And it's there. Web browser works pretty good. I have had some weird issues but nothing I can really complain about. The keyboard, here is the new keyboard with Android 2.3. It's not, it's, pr it's a pretty good keyboard, I've had some trouble with it, but overall, I was trying to do Mashable. Let's try doing a quick little type test. So here's what I said. I was trying to say, what's up guys, this is Tom. Again, I've not been an Android user for a while, or I haven't been an Android user at all, to be honest. So, it takes time to get used to this keyboard. There have been some weird bugs, but it works pretty well overall. I'm very happy with the keyboard, and it's nice. Uh, it's, been, it's had some issues with auto-correcting. It hasn't corrected a lot of things but it does work sometimes. I'm just not very happy with the correction. I think Google could have done better on that. Hopefully they'll update it in the future with the, a different keyboard because overall, like I said, I'm not very happy with it. Let's go back to the home screen. As you can see, I've got these widgets here. You can move these around, or if you want to delete one, you drag it down there. Let me do that again. Well, see, there's a little issue right there, honestly. Not quite sure what the problem is. There we go. There I got it. So you got the same widgets as you're as I, you're used to on other Android versions, and it's been it's really good. I got five home screens here. You got your little widget up there. Let's go into where is it? Let's go into the mail application so I can show you the new the new color thing. So, let's let this load up my conversations really quick. So, let's try and show you what I want to. Let's get this into focus. As you can see or not see, at the top of, of the screen is an orange light. What's indicating that you're at the top of whatever you're trying to do, if you're at the top of a list. So, little changes like that. I just wanted to show you that. And, down here, you have your buttons for navigating. They are touch sensitive. They do vibrate when you touch them, which is very nice. And I like that a lot. It's it's pretty good. Being on the Nexus S also is very good. The experience works great. Right here I'm playing Angry Birds, which you can also get on the iOS app store and several other app stores. Sometimes I do get some weird lag. I'll try and show you it, but it doesn't happen all the time. But gaming overall, pretty good. With the new processor, everything works very good with gaming. 
While Android 2 and 3 is good, there have been a couple issues. The first issue isn't a huge deal, but multitasking could be better. When you launch an application, it is running in the background, which is, you know, good. I like that. But canceling or stopping an application, is, I feel, is just too much work. To stop an application, you have to click the menu button, manage apps, go to running, and then close them from there. I think that's way too much work just to close your applications. I think there should be some easier way to do it with the menu button, but not have to go through all those different menus just to close some applications. Definitely that needs to be worked on. Also, there have been a couple bugs that I have noticed, and they do occur a lot. I can't actually show you them now because they're bugs and I haven't caught them and filmed them, but some include unlocking this and not being able to actually unlock it. This will not respond at all. The little bar will not move like at all. That's been one problem. Some problems with the browser have happened where it freezes up. But those aren't due to the Hummingbird processor, I believe. They're just weird bugs in Android because they don't seem like they could be speed issues. Other than that, the operating system works very good. So. The, pro the problems definitely shouldn't take you away from wanting it to an Android phone. It still works really good. And I'm still very happy with it. It's a very good operating system. Just want to let you know there have been some bugs that occur very often in the operating system. In the end, this is a phone and does need to make calls and use data. So, I'm going to talk about the call. Overall, phone calls work very good. Everyone on the other end of the line could hear me perfectly on T-Mobile's network. It's been a very good experience. I can hear everything perfectly through the headset piece. People can hear me clearly. And it's been really good. I haven't had any dropped calls out of the about 20 or so I've made just to test out the phone. Even when I had about one bar, I still got good quality calls. So calling is very good, and I don't think that should deter you from getting the phone. So let's do a quick speed test. I am on AT&T's 3G. This is a 3G only phone. So let's do some speed tests. Let's go to... Let's go to... I have a video playing in the background. Let's go to CNN.com. So we're loading CNN. It's actually bringing me to the mobile version, but as you can see, that Eve also loads quickly. Let's go down to the bottom and go to the full site. And remember, this is all over T-Mobile's 3G. You cannot actually get AT&T's 3G working on this phone due to band compatibility. So keep in mind, you only get it on T-Mobile. Website's almost loaded. And we're done. So overall, I've been very pleased with the speeds. It'll really depend on your area. In my area, T-Mobile has very good service, but it'll depend on where you are, where your service quality will be. Overall, I've been very pleased with it, and it's pretty good. Overall, the Google Nexus S is a great phone, but with phones like the Inspire 4G and Atrix 4G being released, it's starting to get harder and harder to suggest this phone to you. If you want to have Android 2.3 Gingerbread a lot, then this will definitely be the phone for you because Google pays attention to this phone a lot more than the other ones and they'll probably be updating this phone quicker than other phones. So if you'd like the operating system to be over the hardware, definitely get this phone. But if you want things like 4G, dual core processors, this is not the phone for you. This has been my review of the Google Nexus S. Please visit phoneuplink.com to see the latest news on mobile technology. Thanks for watching.